Tuesday night at Alabama. They face the LSU Tigers fresh off their first conference win of the year. The up to the minute standings in the SEC. Ole Miss and Florida both have road games tonight. They're in action today. There you see Kentucky 3-2. and two. LSU finally has a win in league play. 1-4. and four. My esteemed colleague, Joe Dean Jr. I'm Clay Matvick. We're happy to be with you from Lexington today. Kentucky Joe, three and two, and clearly still working on some things. Kentucky took a step back in Al at Alabama this week, and John Calipari's been talking to his players about worrying more about what they can do to help the team win than their individual play. Meanwhile, LSU has a little bit of confidence now after the comeback win against Texas A&M at home on Wednesday night. They were down 14 in that game and managed to win. Johnny Jones is a former player and coach at LSU. He understands that program better than anyone, and he's going to bring the magic back. Big win over Texas A&M. They come in here. They need to shoot it well today, Clay, to have a chance to beat Kentucky. Shelter insurance one-on-one. -on -one. Johnny O'Brien, the last two games, has been outstanding for LSU. Noel, the last four, has been on fire. Two of the premier big men in the league, they need to control the lane for their teams today to have a chance to win here in Rupp. 24,000 on hand here at Rupp Arena. A tough place to come in and get a win. With that said, Two teams from the state of Texas have been able to do that this year. Baylor came in and knocked off Kentucky, and a couple of weeks ago, so did Texas A&M. Antonio Petty, Lee Cassell, and Forrest Sigler are the officials. Kentucky in its home white, and LSU in road purple and gold. Andrew Del Piero to take the opening tip. The seven foot three former tuba player for the Tigers against Noel. And we're underway. The Tigers control the opening tip. Del Piero is the tallest player in LSU basketball history and clearly the tallest tuba player in NCAA history. <laughs> well said. <laughs> He's got it right now on the block. Poitras watching him. Now here's Carmouche. They work it back on the interior for O'Brien. A little baby hook. Missed the shot. Here comes Kentucky. Brian Harrell will pull it back out. Spins into the paint. Lost it. And turns it over. LSU leads the SEC in steals. And they turn over Texas A&M 19 times the other night. They are probably not going to press Kentucky this afternoon, but clearly their defense is about quickness, pressure, and stealing the basketball. Carmouche, a little deeper than the free throw line, and now a foul underneath. And that's going to go against Poitras, his first, as we take a look at the LSU lineup. And it has the nation's leader in steals out there, Anthony Hickey, a former Mr. Kentucky, as it happens. He's from Hopkinsville back in his home state. Christian County High School was a great high school football player and also uh, one of the top basketball players in the state. Ended up in Baton Rouge and has had uh, two outstanding seasons for the Tigers. Carmouche missed the game at Georgia last Saturday with tendonitis in his knee, his second game back. There's our one-on-one -on -one matchup inside. Hickey rattles home the triple. When Anthony Hickey shoots the ball well, he's one of the top point guards in the SEC because he's quick and tough as nails on the defensive end. Here's Noel. Facing up now against Del Piero. Blows right by him and rolls it in. Del Piero not very mobile, not athletic. The 7-3 size will help him today against Nerlens Noel. Hickey nearly had his pocket pick. Teardropper on the baseline, no good. Rolls out of bounds, and LSU will keep it. Nerlens Noel has gotten so much better. Look at him facing up, using the left-hand dribble and the left-hand short runner to get it in over the 7-3 Del Piero. Nerlens Noel improving game by game on his offensive end. Johnny O'Brien, his first field goal, and LSU leads it 5-2. Two. two minutes in. Two weeks ago, we saw Texas A&M come in here and shoot the lights out with Elston Turner lighting up Kentucky for 40. LSU is going to have to have a similar game this afternoon, shooting the basketball to have a chance to win. Harrow's first field goal attempt. In and out. Del Piero had it. Taken away by R.J. 
Richie Goodwin. That was pretty. Beautiful defensive play, staying with it by the freshman from Little Rock. Archie Goodwin, who has been very much up and down the last two weeks. He needs to play well for Kentucky. Yeah, he shot just two for 12 at Alabama. Looking to get his confidence back. There's the matchup right there. Look at the spin. O'Brien, oh, nice move, but he traveled. It's easy to have a, a nice move when you cut the corner a little bit. Well, you know who rebounds the ball, and you know if you're aggressive, you can go in and get it away from Del Piero. And Archie Goodwin got it done defensively and got an easy basket for Kentucky. First turnover for LSU. Julius Mays, he'll try a three and he hits. Yeah, he is a 35% shooter from out there. And he's been lighting it up. He was four for five from three. One of the few bright spots for Kentucky at Alabama. That's blocked. There's the first one for Nerlens Noel. The average is over four of those per game. Might have got a finger in the eye, too. <laughs> 77 blocks on the year now. That's amazing. Mays feeds Noel. Leaning in, there's that hook and one. <laughs> Nerlens Noel knows who's guarding him, and he knows that Del Piero is not mobile. Takes it right around him with the big step. Uses the long right hand jump hook, draws the foul, and gets to the line for the conventional three point play. Kyle Wilcher is going to come in, and according to Coach Cal, he has been playing like an animal the last few games. Kyle Wilcher was called out by his coach after giving up a lot of points defensively in the tough win at Vanderbilt, and he made the comment that he was embarrassed and decided that he was going to play harder, practice harder, and, and give more energy daily to improve his play. He's had three great ball games for Kentucky. 8-0 run for the Cats over the last minute and a half. They've taken a 10-5 lead here at home. Stringer out for Carmouche. No, there's Noel plucking the rebound. Those are the shots LSU has to make to have a chance on the road today. Nice shot fake by Mays. Tried to feed Noel, who was knifing down the lane. Now back the other way, Hickey. Stringer. No on the three ball, and Mays with the rebound. Three good looks from three-point range for LSU. Didn't get either one of them. Good win. His three is off the heel. And now Paulson is called for the foul. He just checked in moments ago. Our media timeout, the first of the day. Kentucky by five here at Rupp. Today's SEC Network game is brought to you by Regions Bank, proud sponsor of the SEC. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports. And by USAA, proudly serving the financial needs of the military, veterans, and their families. Darinoka in studio. It is over in Knoxville, Tennessee with a one-point lead. Trevor Lacey, last chance for Alabama, gets Jarnell Stokes off the floor. Doesn't really lean into him. No foul is called. Tennessee wins it by one, guys. All right, Tari, thank you very much. Meanwhile, here, five-point lead for Kentucky. Joe, bigger win for Tennessee or tougher loss for Alabama? This is clearly a tougher loss for Alabama. That win would have gotten them to 5-1 and one in the league with a very favorable schedule ahead for the Crimson Tide. And the Villanova win today over Syracuse is big for Alabama because Alabama beat them earlier in the year. Interesting developments as January starts to draw to a close. Now, Kentucky playing without Willie Cauley-Stein for the third straight game. The seven-footer from Kansas re-aggravated that knee injury not that long ago and had minor surgery last week, not playing today. He's in his academic look today. <laughs> Looks yeah. very cerebral, but, yeah, a little minor surgery on the knee. This is the third game Willie Cauley-Stein has missed, and they miss his length, his shot blocking. When he and Nerlens Noel are in the game together, they are a handful. There he is. Probably just came from study hall. Coleman picks up his first foul. 
And if you believe that, I've got some swampland down in South Louisiana <laughs> I could sell you. Well, it's a Saturday. That's He's right. not in school today. <laughs> That's we know right. that. That's right. Wiltshire looking for Noel to post up. Good matchup inside. Johnny O'Brien, very physical against the freshman Nerlens Noel, pushing him off the lane. The walk on Polson getting some first half minutes for Kentucky. Noel spins, throws it up at the left hand, and O'Brien takes it off the glass. Boy, I tell you what, Coleman was one of the best players on the floor Wednesday night. He gets his first bucket here. Perfect fast break execution. Charles Carmouche with the super pass inside to Siobhan Coleman for the easy deuce. And now Noel goes down underneath. There's going to be a foul on O'Brien. Yeah, Johnny O'Brien is playing Nerlens Noel very physical. He's a big, strong guy is O'Brien. 6'9", about 260. Giving up probably 30 pounds to the lighter Noel, trying to body him, push him off the lane, and make it hard for him to work. LSU's very quick. As I mentioned, the top steals team in the league. Shot fake by Wiltshire, and an offensive foul called on Kentucky. Wiltshire leaned in a little bit. He, like we say, he's been playing like an animal, but... Maybe that took it a little too far. <laughs> That's right. Like a bull right there. Bull in the china closet. You see the games coming up next week. Anthony Hickey, nice job on the charge. Plays like his coach Johnny Jones did under Dale Brown back in the day. Well, that's your third turnover here in the half on Kentucky. O'Brien over the top of Noel, off the mark. He's a, yeah, he needs to take it out in play. You're not going to fall away from a 6'11 guy who's got his hands up and make a lot of those shots. you got to take it right at the body, try to put it on the banking board. Kentucky has turned it over its last two trips. Noel out high. Polson gets it to Wiltshire. He has been playing a lot better on the block lately. And you can see he has a lot more confidence than he did a couple of weeks ago. No question about it. He's got four inches on Siobhan Coleman. They went to him inside. Smart play by Kentucky. And that's where Wiltshire's gotten better. Carmouche takes it in. Draws the contact. And that's going to be the second on Polson. They isolate the 6'9 Wiltshire on the 6'5 Siobhan Coleman. Four inch difference. There's the jump hook. No contest. Easy look. Kyle Wiltshire much improved down on the low box. Not just a standstill shooter anymore. Poitras and Mays back in for Kentucky now. Good pass. Uh, Malik Morgan couldn't finish underneath. The true freshman who's been playing so well here in the early season for LSU had an opportunity, couldn't score. You can't miss those kind of opportunities, Clay. When you have layup chances, you've got to put them down. If you're going to come into this building where they've only lost twice under John Calipari. Boy, for his double team. Strong move, got it, and he'll go to the free throw line. That's what John Calipari wants to see from this man. LSU had him in a trap and then let him out. Watch the trap. There it is. Siobhan Coleman does not do a good job of containing him, and Poitras, with his nice strength, takes it to the lane and finishes the play. 70% foul shooter doesn't get it to go. Wiltshire trying to control it. Mays tracks it down, and Kentucky will reset. Now Mays for three. Another new shot clock. Hera. Got it. First basket for Ryan Harrow. Great drive right there by Ryan Harrow. Ball fake. Could have taken a three, but took it closer. More high percentage. Stringer had a poke from behind. Gets it back. Now looking for help. Ryan Harrell keeping the ball off of Anthony Hickey, doing a good job. Coleman, off balance three, Poitras on the back side, brings it down for Kentucky. They're on a 14-2 run right now. LSU is limited offensively. Wiltshire, it's three, no good. LSU needs to look for some threes in transition right there. Hickey, got it. 
We'll see if that's on the line, though. I think the official is going to want to look again. Yeah. Might be a long two. Antonio Petty couldn't tell if Hickey was on the line. They're going to replay it and take a look. You see Johnny Jones. We'll watch. He was clearly behind the line. Nice job by our fantastic camera crew led by the incomparable director Gary Klim. That's their second three-pointer for Anthony Hickey here today. And this up-tempo pace that Johnny Jones has brought back to Baton Rouge certainly benefits a guy like Anthony Hickey. No question. And that's what Johnny Jones and his staff are recruiting to, Clay. They're trying to find athletic players who like to run, who like to shoot quick and crash the boards, and press on defense. We're not going to see a lot of pressing here on the road for them, but they can do it. Ryan Harrell. He's got four, he averages 10. Back screen right in the middle of the floor, which eliminated any help side into the lane, and Kentucky executed that beautifully. Under 12 minutes to go, first half. Del Piero has it blocked, got his own rebound, and they're gonna call a jump ball. And the possession arrow favors Kentucky. How about that defense by the freshman, Nerlens Noel? Tremendous recovery, I like her. I, she's my MVP today. Watch the recovery. Harrow on the layup, on the drive, and then Nerlens Noel on the block. But Harrow with the play. Kentucky Farm Bureau. Big on commitment. Get to your neighborhood Subway and try the new sweet mustard glazed chicken. A surprisingly low-fat flavor phenomenon loaded with tender, juicy chicken and a sweet and smoky mustard sauce only Subway could bring to the table. Get it made just the way you say on your favorite freshly baked bread and hit it with juicy tomatoes, red onions, or any crisp veggies you like. Hurry in for the new low-fat sweet mustard glazed chicken at your neighborhood Subway before it's gone. Subway. Eat fresh. Kentucky by eight. The last three years, 11 Kentucky players drafted by the NBA. Nerlens Noel could be going to the NBA soon. He has been looking sharp here on this Saturday. With the left hand jump hook, now the right hand jump hook over Del Piero. Nerlens Noel shoots 58% from the field on the air. The left handed block, and this time again, the great recovery against Del Piero. Got the jump ball. He's doing it on both ends of the floor, getting better as he grows as a freshman, especially on the offensive end. I was end. just going to say that. The defense has been sharp right from the beginning of the year. The yep. offense is really, really starting coming. to come on. You can see he's gaining so much more confidence. We've seen him put the ball on the floor today and take it to the basket. Harrow throws it up off the window, doesn't go down. Poitras couldn't stick it back. Shane Hamming has checked in for LSU as this one rolls out of bounds. Another LSU turnover. Yeah, Shane Hammock's. Father Gert Hammock played at LSU from 89 to 93 under former head coach Dale Brown, a seven-footer. He took over that center spot after Shaq left it. He exactly he did. You you are correct. From the Netherlands, Poitras with the left hand and a smile on his face. And we heard Coach Cal preaching that this morning at the shoot-around to Poitras. Talk to the players today about having fun. He said, we're getting, we're too uptight. We're taking things too serious. We're a good team. Let's have fun out here. Let's smile and play the game the way we know how to play it. Johnny O'Brien, another block for Noel. On the baseline, a battle for it belongs to Kentucky. I never get tired of watching that guy play defense. Yeah, he's so active and, and long and just, you can't get the ball near the basket when he's, when he's down there. You've got to take it right at his body. Johnny O'Brien is trying to fall away. Nice hand by the rough crowd as Nerlens Noel goes out of the game. Clearly the MVP of this game so far for the Big Blue. He could follow Anthony Davis as the number one overall NBA draft pick this spring. We'll have to wait and see. He's going to have some nice opportunities at the end of the season. Good one. Strong. Wiltshire on the backside. Couldn't put it in. Got to make that one. Can't miss layups. LSU down 10, their largest deficit. That'll help the Tigers' cause as Stringer sticks the three. John Calabari's not happy about his defensive transition. That is the best shooter on the LSU team, Andre Stringer, and nobody was around him as the LSU pitched the ball ahead. This is great execution by the Tigers. Pitch it ahead, nobody comes to covering. 
jumps up, plays some string music in the Lexington KY, ladies and gentlemen, out of Jackson, Mississippi. That would be Andre Stringer. Now, Kentucky fans have been frustrated with this year's group. They see a roster full of NBA lottery picks and then also see this team losing to teams like Texas A&M, which we were here for a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Alabama on Tuesday night, and they're scratching their head a bit. Well, the Kentucky fans don't have a lot of patience, you know, when their team is not a top five national contender. They're not that right now. Now, they might grow into that. This team is long. They are talented. They're athletic, but they are very immature, inexperienced, and really have no veteran leadership, and that's the challenge for Coach John Calipari. Both of those losses at home under Coach Cal have come this season. Goodwin at the point. Hammock guarding him. Here's Mays now. Nice floater with the right hand. It goes down. Julius Mays is the one player for Kentucky that does bring age and maturity. He's a fifth-year senior. He's already graduated, has his undergraduate degree. He's in grad school here at UK. And a guy who's been playing very well, confident, and shoots it extremely well. Stringer split the defense, throws it up, and it rattles down. You got to love Stringer. Great score in high school out of Forest Park in Jackson, Mississippi. Over 2,400 points in high school. Harrow found an angle to the basket, high off the window to score. Uh, he did that against Alabama Tuesday night. Got inside a lot, but was throwing up shots under heavy pressure. Today, he's uh, clearing himself going by his man and getting easier looks around the rim. He's got six now, and the lead is nine for Kentucky. Siobhan Coleman, off balance, over the head shot. And Kentucky's going to have it back. Here's Stringer. Yeah, watch Andre Stringer. Inside out, Harrow is late getting to him. Look at that. Draws the big guys and then takes it up, and the little teardrop gets it to fall. Great play by the 5'10" junior Andre Stringer Stringer's going to sit down now Johnny Jones doesn't have a deep bench neither does coach Cal for that matter but LSU beat up right now Corbin Collins is out with a head injury Eddie Ludwig missing his fifth game with a head injury Goodwin threw it up for Noel and now that one's tied up and the possession arrow is going to favor LSU Well, 24,000, including the number one fan, John Calipari, don't like this call because Shane Hammock is over the back right there to get the jump. The officials felt like he got all ball, and that was the, the call. And now another jump ball, and Kentucky's going to get it back. They balance out because it looked like Kentucky had grabbed the arm there of Johnny O'Brien. I guess the calls balance out. Interesting stat here early as there's Carmouche for the steal and the flush. There comes the LSU pressure. Very effective in the win against Texas A&M early this week. The trap, Javon Coleman on the point of the zone trap, doing an excellent job there. Coach Cal wasting no time to burn another timeout. Already two used up. It's a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one zone trap. There's the steal on the inbounds by Charles Carmouche and the dunk. And then watch the trap. Well, there's the steal again. Great job, Johnny on the spot. And then on the second throw in, they got the trap and forced the timeout. Toyota SEC leaders were looking at steals per game in the SEC. Anthony Hickey, he leads the nation in steals. Look who's fourth, Charles Carmouche, who just had that theft in basket. Well, Anthony Hickey, as you mentioned, leads the nation. He had eight steals in Baton Rouge Wednesday night in the win over Texas A&M. Young man from right here in the state of Kentucky, Hopkinsville. Uh, very quick, very tough. Cut his hair this year to make himself a little faster. <laughs> Doesn't have the dreads anymore. Here comes the pressure. You know, we didn't know how much press we would see from LSU today. You surprised you see this? John, Johnny Jones shared with me that he did not plan to press very much. That's the reason why, because he knew Kentucky at home would be able to shred it and shoot layups. Goodwin now has four for Kentucky. Coleman. Had it poked away. Noel takes it away. Here comes Kentucky back. Goodwin. 
He'll get to the line. 7.57 to go here. For Grump Arena, first half, 26-17 Kentucky. Timeout on the floor. Dari Noka in studio, third-ranked Kansas has uh, begun against Oklahoma. KU has won 16 straight games, longest current streak in the country. Jamari Trailer on the backdoor pass. KU up 18-10, Sooner shooting 3 of 15. K-State goes down to Iowa State. That game is final. And uh, look at these scores. You also remember Syracuse and Louisville also lost today. Guys? All right, Dari. Ashley Chud with a smirk on her face as her Wildcats have a lead here at home today. How about Louisville going down for the third straight game? The number five team in the country, you know that they're going to fall down in the rank. You know, the, the most commonly used phrase in college basketball, it's tough to win on the road in this league. No question. I don't care what league you're in, it's hard to go on the road and win. Louisville is continuing to find that out. Archie Goodwin. Getting some help from his friends. Kyle Wiltshire, the putback. Yeah, Nerlens Noel made that possible because he cleared his man completely out of the lane and allowed Wiltshire to get the rebound as it came off the weak side. Now, an official timeout. Shot clock didn't start. There we go. Shot clock did not start. They just took six seconds off. So there's 29 on the shot clock now. Officials corrected it. And we're going to play basketball. And that little break in the action is going to allow Poitras to check back in for the Wildcats. You know, we just saw Wiltshire get that basket. He would like Poitras to start playing like Wiltshire has. He, yes. he really got the message. I'm talking about he being Coach Cal. Tucky in the zone on the side out of bounds. 2-3. Carmouche. Little extra pass along the baseline. Loose. O'Brien tracks it down, throws it up, can't score. And it is Poitras coming away with it for the Cats. O'Brien is struggling on offense. Only one basket in this game. Really affected by the big people. Nerlens Noel in particular as he goes to the lane. Struggling today. Kentucky dominating inside. Noel scores. 26 of their 31 points have come inside the paint. They are going inside. Noel is having a good ball game on the block with left and right hand hooks, driving it to the basket as we've seen Ryan Harrow and Julius Mays and Archie Goodwin do, and then getting to the offensive board. The points in the paint dominant why Kentucky has built this 14-point lead. Carmouche fouled by Noel. That's going to be the first on him. Yeah, Noel, sometimes he doesn't block it. He missed it right there. But his presence inside forced Johnny O'Brien to take it up a little higher. And then watch the offense right. Spin back in the left hand off the banking board. That is beautiful right there. He wouldn't have done that back in December. Seven-0 run for Kentucky. O'Brien. Oh, boy, working hard to free himself for a look and score. And that time he took it toward the basket and did not fall away. That was the best move of the afternoon for Johnny O'Brien, the sophomore. One and out for Kentucky. Back come the Tigers. 31-19. Wildcats on top. Hickey. Nice move around Goodwin to finish. And they got no Nerlens Noel away from the basket with the ball screen, which opened up that lane for Hickey to drive. Point for us answering on the other end. Leads back to a dozen. LSU giving up way too many shots in the lane. Too easy right there for Poitras. Just one pass, drove it right into the lane and shot a five-foot jumper. Carmouche left it short. Breakout for Kentucky. Poitras ahead of everybody. And ties the largest lead of the afternoon for the Wildcats. Three ball. No good. O'Brien. Blocked by Noel. That's his fourth. 
Oh, my, on the backside, Malik Morgan with the slam. And a great pass again by Charles Cormouche, the senior out of New Orleans, McLean High School. And has made some outstanding passes for easy LSU baskets today. Wilchers off with the three. Noel already at his per game average for blocks in this one. And we've got 420 to go in the first half. Carmouche fouled hard. It's either going to be Noel or Goodwin. They're going to give it to Goodwin. Kentucky loves to run. Leaking out was Alex Poitras. LSU slow getting back. The throw over the top was beautiful by Julius Mays. Pass it to guys open ahead of you and lay the ball in. Easy basket for the Cats. First foul on Goodwin. Sixth team foul on Kentucky. And that's the first free throw attempt of the afternoon for LSU. This is a team that is near the bottom of the league in foul shooting. And they don't get to the line that often anyway. Carmouche, who's at the line, is actually a fifth-year senior. Started at the University of New Orleans when they decided they were going to go to a different level from Division I. He transferred to Memphis where he played and graduated and now is taking advantage of the NCAA rule to come back to LSU get into graduate school and play his last season for the Tigers. There he is, talking to Johnny Jones. 2-2-1 two, two, zone press now by the Tigers. Three from the wing. Fresh 35. Four minutes to go here in the first half. Goodwin. Important good defense on that baseline. Here's Poitras now. Blocked by Del Piero. Out of bounds to LSU. He can play the tuba. He can play a little defense. But Nerland's Noel, he's putting on a show here for the Kentucky fans at Rupp Arena. He's got four blocks already today. Dari Noka in studio coming up in the C Spire halftime report. Kyle Macy going to join me. We'll show you how Tennessee got a big win over Alabama and how Louisville lost their third straight. Now, Macy and I have a request for you, Joe Dean. Next Andre Stringer bucket, could we get a little Stringer music? <laughs> I like that, Dari. A little Stringer music by Andre Stringer. I'll tell you what. When my dad was doing these games back in the day, he played a lot of string music yes, when Kyle Macy was playing out here on this rough arena floor, I'll tell you that. One of the best in Kentucky history, no doubt about it. Now working for us. Ten-point lead for the Wildcats here at home. Under four to go first half. LSU coming off a conference win Wednesday night. Kentucky coming off a disappointing loss Tuesday night at Alabama. Morgan around the pick, throws it inside. This is Jalen Courtney. O'Brien, the putback, no, and Harrow runs it down in the corner. Poitras will pull it back out. Hadn't seen a lot of zone, now we are. We're going to see the 2-3 zone by LSU. I've been wondering when Johnny Jones would go to it. And out of the timeout, here we go. We'll see how Kentucky attacks it. And Kentucky has struggled some this year against zones. Point for us. Got it. And he'll go to the line. Coach Calipari wants him to be a beast. He wants him to have fun, but he wants him to be a beast. And the way to be that is to get to the offensive glass. There's the nice penetration by Archie Goodwin. Gets it on the board, and Poitras, who's got so much physical ability, gets there, puts it back, and is an excellent shooter. We'll see if he can knock it in. There it is. He's the first one to double figures today. He's got 11 now as Wiltshire comes back in. Nice hand right there for Alex Poitras. Gets a pat on the back from his coach, John Calipari, who has really been on him this year about his effort, his maturity, and his sustaining effort for longer periods of time in a game. Oh, Brian. 
Wiltshire guarding him. That should be advantage O'Brien. He threw up a good shot, but doesn't come down. Good one foul. And that's going to be Malik Morgan's second. Check that. They give it to Stringer. His first. So now Goodwin will go to the free throw line. Well, the free throw shooting as a team has been a struggle for Kentucky this year. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Kentucky is 12th in the league in free throw shooting. LSU is 13th. You see the balance of scoring by Kentucky. You know who the worst free throw shooting team in the league right now is? It's not a school that you would really think of. Yeah, you told me this. It's Vanderbilt. It's the Vanderbilt Commodores. How about that? I had to fact check you because I didn't believe it when you told me. Yeah. <laughs> They normally are one of the better free throw shooting teams in the league. O'Brien kept it alive, but Hickey couldn't hit the three. Now another rebound for LSU. One of the, one of the benefits to taking three-point shots, you get a lot of long rebounds and a lot of opportunities to get the ball back. LSU makes about seven and a half threes per game, but they, they take a lot of them. There it is. Nice pass. And Harrell finishes. Defense to offense. Quick hands on the defensive end by Goodwin. Pass ahead to Harrow. Lay it on the glass. Beautifully done by the Big Blue. Fifteen point lead for Kentucky. Wide open, O'Brien. Bang. Johnny O'Brien to third. 22% three-point shooter buries his first triple today. Well, that's the best way to go against Noel. If you can pull him away from the basket and knock down threes, that opens up a lot of things in the lane. Nice shot by Johnny O'Brien. 2-3 zone for LSU. Wiltshire on the baseline. Got it. Cal Wiltshire. Six points now, averages 11. Last three games, he's been in double figures. As we're under a minute to go in the half. Nice move by Coleman. Good pass to O'Brien. And he gets it off the glass. You saw that time O'Brien took it right toward the rim. And Erlens Noel kind of backed away from him. Didn't want to pick up a foul here late in the half. Lobbed. Good win. Never got that pass from Mays. Two on one. Back the other way. Hickey is fouled. And Anthony Hickey will go to the free throw line with just under 23 seconds to go. Harrow picks up, check that, Mays, his first foul. You're upside down. We've talked about Anthony Hickey, who's at the line. Former Kentucky Mr. Basketball from Christian County in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Was an outstanding football player, quarterback that led his... Christian County High School football team to the state championship and when the game ended he drove 140 miles to play in his high school basketball game that night quite an athlete plus he wanted to impress the recruiters he knew that basketball his first bread was going to be buttered eight steals in the win over Texas a and Wednesday oh. night is uh, that's it and you were there Clay. Yeah, that's so uh, impressive Shot clock is off. Kentucky has a chance to take the last shot of the half. Big possession here for both teams. LSU really needs a stop. Noel out high with nine seconds to go. Mays lost it at his feet. Two seconds. Throws it up. No. And that's how the half ends. A little disappointing there at the end for Kentucky. But a good first half as they have an 11-point lead. Check out that. 32 points in the paint for Kentucky. 32 of their 42 points coming from inside. LSU's got to shore that up. They'll talk about it at halftime. Dari Noka and Kyle Macy, our SEC Network studio for the C Spire Halftime Report. Guys.
All right, Clay and Joe, thank you much. This is the C Spire Halftime Report. Dari Noak alongside former Kentucky great Kyle Macy. We'll talk about that game in a minute. Let's show you what happened, though. Knoxville, Tennessee, big three for Trevor Lacey. Alabama, Tennessee, tied up at 50. And then Trevor Relaford for three, one-point Tennessee lead. Now, Trey Golden misses a free throw, tries to throw the ball back in bounds, takes out a fan in the front row. Everybody was okay. Now, last chance, Lacey. Uh-oh, got Jarnell Stokes up a little, no call. What do you think? Yeah, it, it's a tough, could have gone either way, really, because it looked like Stokes came off his feet a little bit, but maybe just not enough contact to make a game-deciding call like that. Tennessee's second SEC win. It's Alabama's second SEC loss. And like you said off the air, uh, it's a big one for Alabama. It would have been nice to go on the road and grab that one. Yeah, and they seemingly led the whole game and then yeah. th had things in control, but just kind of let it slip down a stretch. Could have gone to 5-1 and one right there in the thick of everything, but now draw, fall back to 4-2. and two. Let's talk about Kentucky. First half, they're shooting 58%. What's caught your attention? Well, I like the way that Poitras, down low, and Noel both are really uh, dominating down in the paint. And also defensively, they're doing a pretty good job in transition. Noel is so impressive on the defensive end, but now we're starting to see some of his offense come around and uh, you know holding the, the Tigers down to 34% shooting while shooting 57% from a team. That's pretty good combination. Nerlens Noel, seven points, five rebounds, and four blocked shots in the first half. He is doing everything. Syracuse, Villanova. Syracuse, just one loss on the season. Villanova, of course, beat Louisville earlier in the week. Brandon Trish for three, and then Trish again. Brandon Trish, 25 points for the Orange today. They were up six, but it did not last. Interesting decision. Jim Beheim. Coaches talk about what to do all the time. His team up three. Now you're under seven seconds to go. They elect not to foul, and it costs him because Ryan Archie Diacono hits the three and forces overtime. Yeah, sometimes players, if they don't foul, they get, they keep their hands down, don't really contest the shot, and that's what we saw. Allowed him to get a wide open look. Couple of big threes for James Bell. One on the dish from Darren Hilliard, who actually had 25 points. Bell had 13. Too much Villanova in the extra period, and they beat Syracuse 75-71. This the same week they beat another top five team in Louisville. First unranked team to beat two straight top five teams since Ball State in 2001. Now Louisville this time trying to bounce back from two straight losses, taking on Georgetown. Russ Smith did not start, but did score 12 points off the bench. Yeah, Rick Pitino kind of tweaking his lineup a little bit, not starting the two real good guards. Smith did play and played well, but uh, Georgetown just a little bit too much, a little late. There's Smith to Gorgie Jing for the uh, Dang for the dunk. Louisville ties it at 48 in the end. Look at that great tip by Aaron Bowen. Almost four minutes to go. The rest of the way, each team scored one point. And Georgetown comes away with a 53-51 win. And after a 16-1 start, Louisville has now lost three games in a row. Mentioned the four blocks for Nerlens Noel. He's doing a little bit of everything. He also has seven points. Kentucky up 11 at halftime. This halftime report is brought to you by C Spire. Welcome to a different kind of wireless network. C Spire, the wireless network personalized for you. Welcome back to the SEC Game of the Week, presented by Regions Bank. 42-31 at the half. First half stats brought to you by Crystal. Nothing like it. What stands out, Joe? Well, the fact that LSU is only shooting 35%, being dominated on the boards and in the paint, and yet they're only down 11. They're still in the game. Coach John Calipari said after that loss in Tuscaloosa on Tuesday night, too much me, not enough we. Is the teamwork starting to come around uh, based on what you saw in that first half? Well, they're giving the ball up better today, and the thing is amazing. They have scored 16 out of 19 baskets today in the paint area. That's just remarkable. No doubt dominating inside. Let's take a look at the first half highlights presented by Papa Joe. Six different players scoring here. Poitras, the freshman Nerlens Noel with the left-hand hook. Kyle Wilcher, right-hand jump hook. Kentucky balance today. Ryan Harrow knifing through the LSU defense. Good one on the steal right here from Del Piero. Left-handed bank shot. 
And then Mays with a little teardrop. Six guys all in the paint, ladies and gentlemen. You see the balance of the Kentucky team here. They scored 42 in the first half, 32 of those in the paint. John Calipari. I got to expect is pleased with what Alex Poitras gave him in that first half. A lot of the folks in the stands here today think that he might be the biggest key to their NCAA tournament. Hopes. I don't think there's any question. Poitras, 11.6 rebounds, playing uh, with a little more sense of urgency this afternoon. As Johnny O'Brien had it stripped by Nerland's Noel, the crowd wanted a traveling call, but instead it's going to be a foul on Kentucky. That's the second on Mays. Mays in the help position coming over and reaching in. There's no, John Calipari doesn't like that because he's saying, why are you going to reach in when we've got the best shot blocker in the country standing right in front of the rim? Let him do his job. And that's the thing that you and I talked about this morning at the shoot-around. He is teaching these guys. He's spending a lot of time teaching, even how to practice. Yeah, your comment was right on, I thought, Clay, this morning when you said he is still teaching them how to practice every day, hard, with concentration. I mean, we're talking about practice. Yeah. Trying to get these youngsters, these freshmen, to grow up quicker. Nice move by Goodwin. He didn't look like a freshman there. He's got seven now. Too many holes in the LSU defense. They've just given up way too many easy shots in the lane by Kentucky. Spinning, O'Brien doesn't get the roll. Got the rebound, however. Hickey passes up the three. Carmouche oh. to Coleman. And a blocking foul on Kentucky. Going down hard is Poitras. He thought he had the position, but he's called for his second. He changed. And Coleman will go to the free throw line. Great ball Coleman movement that time by LSU, taking it all the way around the perimeter to get it to uh, Siobhan Coleman down on the, on the baseline in the short corner area. Yeah, you take a look. There's Johnny Jones, the head coach at LSU. All the coaches today around the country are wearing sneakers in honor of coaches. Yeah, John Calipari had on sneakers in the first half. He's changed, but that's in honor of the Coaches versus Cancer program that is uh, sponsored annually by the National Association of Basketball Coaches to bring awareness to the fight for cancer. Great cause, and all college basketball coaches around the country participate in raising money for cancer. Yeah, this is going to belong to LSU. That's a cause that is near and dear to the heart of Coach Calipari. Lost his mother a couple of Novembers ago to cancer, and both of his grandmothers yes. passed away because yeah. of cancer. He actually told us that this morning, and, and uh, he feels very, very strongly about the NABC and their annual Coaches versus Cancer program. It's a great cause. Double team there is O'Brien, and he traveled. Good defense by Poitras. And Noel, they call them the Twin Towers here in Lexington. And an adjustment at halftime by John Calipari. They did not double-team Johnny O'Brien in the first half. This time, they bring Poitras over. Two big guys double-teaming Johnny O'Brien. He was a little surprised there and traveled with the ball. The man defense here by LSU. Saw a little bit of zone from the Tigers in that first half. There's Noel on the block. Against O'Brien, working his way in. There's that soft left hand. Noel now with nine. So much improved on the offensive end is Noel. Look at that up and under by Carmouche. That had no business going in, but it does. And LSU back to single digits as far as the deficit goes. My first time to see Carmouche live and in person. He's a good-looking player, a senior with maturity, confidence, handles the ball well, and a good athlete for the LSU Tigers. Good win. That might have been partially blocked by Coleman. O'Brien, shot fake, falling away. And Noel, just too tall. Got that rebound over Coleman. Now Goodwin hopping into the lane, and he draws the contact. Well, this is a move that Nerlens Noel would have a hard time with about a month and a half ago. Now he's not worried about anybody contesting the shot. He understands he can take it up and score. And Charles Carmouche, nice baseline drive, uses the rim to protect him from the shot blocker. Foul on Hickey, his first. 
Archie Goodwin, another key freshman to the potential success of the Kentucky Wildcats moving forward. Very talented, very athletic. Got to get him to play harder. And, and a key position. The backcourt really is the key for Kentucky the rest of the season. Yeah, think? Absolutely. No question, Clay. And Julia, Julius Mays has been playing much better, and Ryan Harrell as well. Can't give up easy shots like that if you're going to allow five, nine guards to drive through your defense and shoot layups. That won't be something that John Calipari will like. Bounces off for Goodwin after the stringer make on the other end. Foul underneath on Kentucky. And Noel is pleading his case, and it's actually going to go against Polson. That's the third on Jared Polson. Jared Polson, a junior out of Nicholasville, Kentucky, West Jasmine High School. Walked on here at UK, number five right there, has earned a scholarship. Asked John Calipari about him this morning. He said he brings us energy. Get a nice shot filling in for Harrow early in the season when he was out of the lineup. That was a 13th on Kentucky, by the way. Stringer got the three ball. Nice set play by Johnny Jones. They ran a, a double screen on the weak side, and Stringer curled around it and got himself open. He's LSU's best three-point threat. LSU has chipped away. They're within seven now. Remember, they came from 14 back on Wednesday night to beat AM. LSU is a scrappy basketball team. They have quickness. That's their strength. And they play to the personality of their head coach. Harrow. Clang. Carmouche, the rebound. Ahead to Coleman. He flies in. Can't finish. And now Kentucky a three on two. Mays for three. And stops the LSU momentum, at least for now. And a five-point turnaround right there, Clay. The missed layup on the break by LSU that converts the other end to a three-point basket by Julius Mays. Just the second three made by Kentucky today. They're two of eight. No need to shoot threes when you're scoring in the paint as much That's as right. Kentucky is. No question. Hickey, baseline pass. Coleman. Boy, great defense in there by Noel, but O'Brien was able to get the rebound anyway and score. The only negative about Noel trying to block shots is when he leaves his man, it opens up his man for offensive putbacks like Johnny O'Brien got right there. Out of bounds to LSU as the double team on Noel works for the Tigers. And we've got a timeout on the floor. LSU not going away easily in this game. Pitching ahead, Julius Mays, ladies and gentlemen. A little string music in Lexington, KY. Former Wildcat football great, Randall Cobb. Being recognized here during the timeout. Man, he did everything for the Wildcats. Wide receiver, quarterback, running back, return kicks. Now, of course, playing for the Green Bay Packers. All right. Potential finalists for our Capital One Cup Impact Performance of the Week. Anthony Hickey's on the list. Scotty Wilbekin, for my money, is the most improved player in the SEC for the Florida Gators. Anthony Hickey, eight steals against Texas A&M. Case closed. Marshall Henderson. How about this guy? One of the most electric players in the country. It's playing in Oxford, Mississippi. He went for 24 in the second half on Thursday night in the win over Tennessee. CapitalOneCup.com to vote for this week's impact performance. Carmouche for LSU. Bumped. And he'll go to the line. By the way, today, Hickey with two steals. LSU doing a much better job in the second half on the offensive end. Four of eight to start the second half from the field. Four of four at the foul line, and they have out-rebounded Kentucky here in the first five minutes of the second half. Johnny Jones, good halftime talk and some adjustments to get LSU back in this game. Coming out is Mays. Mays is going to sit down as he just picked up his third foul. Poitras comes back in for the Wildcats. Poitras has been very good today, 11 points, as Carmouche hits the back end. 52-45, Kentucky by seven. Under 15 minutes to go here in Lexington. Wilcher got it inside to Poitras, got 
tripped up and goes down, and a jump ball is called. It's going to stay down on this end. Good conversion by the purple LSU Tigers. Ball goes inside to Poitras. You saw three purple shirts converge on him. He slipped and fell, and there was the jump ball. The possession, possession arrow now will go back to the Tigers the next jump. Good one gets it into Harrell. And now feeds Noel, who's fouled. <laughs> A little Bronx cheer from the crowd at Rupp Arena. They thought that uh, maybe a foul should have been called a little bit earlier, well, too. Johnny O'Brien, the third, has been playing Noel very physical all day. That has been the game plan. Try to get him off the lane area. There's a potential steal by Icky. Not stepped out, but boy, he is lightning he quick. He is quick. He anticipates so well. You can see a little bit of the football skills in him going for that, uh, that interception, if you will. Came into the day with 54 steals on the year, leading the nation. O'Brien bodies up Noel, who hands off to Goodwin. Nice move on the baseline and the reverse finish. Johnny O'Brien was right there to shut off the drive and left his position and allowed Goodwin to go all the way down the baseline. Fundamental mistake by Johnny O'Brien right there. Jump shot for Hickey is out. And out to Kentucky. Got a good look there, did LSU and Siobhan Coleman right on the board. See, see Johnny O'Brien just back away. You got to close off that baseline. Put your foot out of bounds right there. Take the charge. Didn't do it. Great job by Archie Goodwin to take advantage of the mistake and go lay it off the banking board. Uh, O'Brien should have been a little more aggressive there, you're saying? That, well, he should have you know, moved his feet and cut off the baseline drive. Food. We teach at the Dixie basketball camp, put your foot out of bounds if you have to. Now, there is O'Brien picking up the foul. And I was going to make the point that O'Brien has done a much better job in recent games staying out of foul trouble because that plagued him early. Now, with that said, he's picked up his second here today. Very true. He's got to be careful, but he's got his hands full right here with uh, Mr. Noel, who is getting so much better offensively looks more confident and comfortable on the block and they're looking for him more look at him they're trying to go to him good well, lost it got it back Harrow's three off the back iron rebound good one and then he lost it to Coleman Siobhan Coleman blocked by Goodwin now ah, they're gonna get him for a foul Coleman goes down hard helped up by his teammates looks like he's all right Great job defensively by Coleman, taking it coast to coast, blowing right by the slower Wilcher, and then getting it on the glass, drawing the foul by Goodwin. Siobhan Coleman showing some athleticism. Chance to get two at the line. Fifth team foul on Kentucky. LSU shooting free throws very well today. As we mentioned, coming into the game, only 60%, 13th in the league. Got them both. That's keeping LSU in the game right now. Good foul shooting. Much more aggressive on the offensive end of the LSU Tigers here in the second half. LSU, by the way, 10 of 12 at the line now. Harrow. One and done is Kentucky. Here come the Tigers. Down just seven. Hickey to a wide open O'Brien. Jumper out. Battle for it in the corner. And it's going to stay on this end. Great hustle by Anthony Hickey to the loose ball. He went after it and forced Goodwin to get it and step out of bounds. Credit Anthony Hickey with that play. Holson comes back in with three personals, and he is going to give Harrow a break. Thirteen minutes to go in Lexington. This game's still too close to call as the fans can... Uh, you could sense it in this crowd here. They're, they're not sure again. No, that's right. I mean, they were here two weeks ago as we were when Texas A&M won here. Oh, Bryant goes hard and scores. Kentucky probably got away with a foul right there. Great ball screen roll to the basket. 
And to feed Johnny O'Brien with the finish. Paulson takes it all the way in and it rolls down. The walk-on contributing and the crowd appreciates it. Because they need a lift. O'Brien poked away. Good defense by the Big Blue. Quick hands. Paulson giving the Cats a lift right there. Twelve minutes to go. Under ten on the shot clock. Goodwin, no. LSU with a two-man game. Johnny O'Brien with a little stuff arena for the LSU Tigers. Jared Paulson using the banking board, ladies and gentlemen. The Cats by seven in row. Back at Rupp Arena, home of the defending national champions. Well, just under 12 minutes to go here in Lexington today. The Wildcats have their hands full with LSU Tigers. There's Coach Calipari and there are folks around the country that are questioning whether this is an NCAA tournament team now. And a loss today to the LSU Tigers who come into the day one and four in the SEC would be absolutely devastating to their cause. No question about it. The one thing Kentucky has going for them, they have a very good strength of schedule. They played Duke, they won it, played at Louisville, at Notre Dame, and a good win over Maryland. But really no signature wins. Well, that's a great point, but if they, you know, if they win 12, 13 games in the conference, but still have a lot of work to get to that point, it's gonna be hard to keep Kentucky out of the tournament. Carmouche on the reverse, a little short. And can't convert after that ninth Kentucky turnover. Kentucky will be at Ole Miss on Tuesday. That will be a chance for a resume building win. Mays on the floor, and Calipari right there gets the timeout. And Kentucky has two remaining. With a lot of game to play here in Lexington, 11-14 to go. Alongside Joe Dean Jr., I play Mathic. We're back here in Lexington. SEC Game of the Week presented by Regions Bank. And let's take a look at the Wendy's Wooden Watch. Phil Pressey, he's on the list. The point guard for Mizzou. Seven assists a game is very impressive. He is quick, quick with the basketball. Runs the show for the Missouri Tigers, who's been in the top 20 all year. They had a great win over Illinois in the pre-conference. But without Lawrence Bowers, he has struggled a little bit, as has Mizzou. Missouri leading Vanderbilt in Columbia. That game going on right now, 15 to 11, midway through the first half. Here's Wilcher leaning in over Coleman, doesn't get it to go. Goodwin flying in for the rebound, and he's fouled. Great effort by Archie Goodwin. And speaking of Phil Pressey, he's on your Dean's list. Top point guards in the SEC. Well, he is. You see his numbers. We talked about his assists. Trevor Elliford might be playing the best of any point guard in the league right now for Alabama. Ryan Harrell we've seen today. Steady for John Calipari. Jarvis Summers leads the SEC in assist to turnover ratio. And Anthony Hickey, of course, leads the nation in steals. That's five tremendous point guards now. You know, I left off Trey Golden at Tennessee, and I left off Scotty Wilbekin from Florida, who both really could be on that list. Good one, got them both. There you see Hickey on the bench now for LSU. He just picked up his third personal foul for the Tigers. LSU can't win without him. They've got it. Johnny Jones won't leave him out very off, very long. Got to have Anthony Hickey defensively more than anything else. O'Brien, Coleman, shot fake, moves in for a closer look, in and out. Good one. Can't be stopped unless you foul him. And Hickey got that one too. That's uh, number four then on Hickey, I believe. It is. Yeah, Derwin's Noel at the other end actually knocked the ball long 
to his teammate Archie Goodwin to ignite the fast break and that's where Goodwin's so effective in the open court driving it to the lane and creating not only shot opportunities but chances to get fouled and go to the line. And now Hickey back on the pine. Ten point lead for Kentucky. John Calipari always teaching. Does a tremendous job teaching the players how to play the game fundamentally correct and with intensity. Anticipating that pass, good one. A half step too late. Stay on this end with LSU. You know, it's one thing play to recruit great players, which John Calipari does extremely well. It's another thing to coach them up and to get them to play hard all the time and play as a team. That's what he's working on right now with this group. Well, when you heard Coach Cal in the offseason, you knew there was going to be some growing pains. I think a lot of the Kentucky fans were hoping that he was exaggerating a little bit. Well, he spoiled them the first three years. <laughs> That's My right. goodness. There's Stringer for three. You bet. In the corner, knocks it down. There's and an official's timeout as Noel no, is shaking up. There's your, uh, oh, I thought, I thought Johnny Jones called timeout. I was going to say, you know, there's that situation we talked about last time. That is a 30-second timeout. LSU did call a timeout, There you coach. go, yeah. There's the penetration and pitch outside. Andre Stringer with the three-pointer in. Johnny Jones did call the timeout right there, which begs the question, Clay, that you asked me last time we were together. Why does a coach call timeout after his team scores a basket? And, you know, the only thing I can say is he, there's some issues he wants to discuss. He wants to bring them over after a positive play, which, of course, this is a positive play for LSU. Well, you also saw that Nerlens Noel tweaked his right ankle and kind of hobbled over to the Kentucky bench. He is being looked at right now. You can see today nine points on four of five shooting. Very efficient. Seven rebounds and five block shots. Another solid performance today from Nerlens Noel, and there's still about ten minutes to go in this one. He does a lot more than just block shots. He, he steals the ball. He passes the ball well, starting to score more and become more of an offensive threat for the Kentucky team. Siobhan Coleman away from the ball just picked up his second personal foul, and that is going to be the sixth team foul on LSU here in the half. Mays to trigger it in. Good one, a little out of control. And O'Brien has it for LSU. Down seven. Carmouche for three. Wiltshire, big rebound for the Wildcats. Mays passes up to three. Good job getting back defensively by LSU there. Covering up Mays, the first three-point threat. And then Wiltshire, the second. Good job by the purple and gold. Seven to shoot. Harrow to Wiltshire. Back for Harrow with three on the clock, and it goes down. Pretty give and go with Wiltshire and Harrow. Well, Harrow's man left him to go and help on Wiltshire, who was the three-point threat, and Wiltshire smartly threw it right back to Harrow, who shot the finger roll from about four feet. That's the first basket for the Kentucky point guard of the second half. He's now in double figures with ten. Doing a good job defending Morgan. Now Stringer. There's the double. That's the adjustment. That Coach Cal made at halftime. Coleman, a wide open look at a three. Poitras going airborne, gets that rebound. Poitras got his own miss, and now he'll get to the free throw line. Let's go back to that two man game, about as pretty as you're going to see this run. No question. There's the screen, and you see. Number 10, Stringer left Ryan Harrow to go to Wiltshire, the shooter. Wiltshire right back quickly to Harrow. Smart pass, and Harrow finished with the finger roll. Noel set to check back in. And 
Kentucky in the bonus with 8.01 to go here in the half. And Colson's going to come back in, too, getting a lot of playing time today. We'll keep an eye on Noel. Again, that right ankle, it appeared that he turned it a few minutes ago. There's a good look at Alex Poitras right there, 6'7", freshman from Clarksville, Tennessee. Has a twin sister, Alexis, who goes to school here at the University of Kentucky. And I did not realize, but last year, Anthony Davis had a twin sister here at UK. I did not know that until just recently. Well, kind of interesting. We, Again. We, we throw out little nuggets. You are a fountain of information, and <laughs> most of it is factual. I've always said that about you, you know, Joe. I'm, I'm, I'm striving for 50%. 63-52. It's back to a double-digit lead for Kentucky. Every time LSU creeps within seven or even five, Kentucky wakes up. They turn it up a notch. O'Brien had a block. That's number six for Noel. Wow. Took it right into his chest that time. You Johnny gotta like that. Johnny O'Brien got his shot blocked, got the rebound, and took it right into the chest of Nerlens Noel, which allowed him to shoot it right over him. 17 now for O'Brien. Noel. Double teaming him there out to Mays. Mid range jumper off the back side. Great block out by Coleman. Really nice block out by number five, Siobhan Coleman. And that is the third on Poitras. Let's look at the perseverance of Johnny O'Brien. There's the block. Watch him take it right to his chest. Right into the chest. Up and over the shot blocker. Great job by Johnny O'Brien, the third. All right, okay, in the studio, how about Missouri laying it on Vanderbilt? This game was 11-11 at one point. Ernest Ross on the dish from Phil Pressey. Ross hits the three. Missouri on a 25-2 run right now. Here go, ladies. Oh. And LSU will host Missouri on Wednesday night. Yeah, good, great look at Ned Clark right there, who played for LSU from 52 to 55. Clay was a teammate of my dad's, but he also played with the great Bob Pettit and was a part of the 1953 Final Four team at LSU. This is his first trip ever to Rupp Arena. Class gentleman, Ned Clark. To get a chance to talk to him at halftime, how's he enjoying it? He's having a ball. He really is. Of course, he'd like to see his LSU team do a little better. That's the uh, Tigers' eighth turnover. That's Mr. Clark. Looks on. Under seven to go here at Rupp. There's that press by LSU. Kentucky breaks it with relative ease. And look at Poitras going the distance. Great, great move by the freshman Alex Poitras, but just way too easy defensively by LSU. Can't allow a guy to go coast to coast right through your defense like that. Lead once again, 11. Hamming. Into the game once again, number 11 in purple for LSU. O'Brien on the baseline in trouble. Was hemmed in, and it's a turnover, but Kentucky gives it back as Hammock tracks it down. Now Stringer in the lane, jump shot. Off the mark, Poitras, quick outlet pass. And LSU can't afford too many empty possessions now. No, that was a bad selection right there by Andre Stringer. Didn't really have a good look. And now Morgan called for the foul. That's number three on Malik Morgan. Gets the pressure, pitch ahead, and Alex Poitras goes coast to coast. Purple shirts are scrambling back defensively. He knifes right through all the jerseys. Gets it all the way to the glass and lays it in. Beautiful offensive play by Alex Poitras, who is having a really good basketball game. I think the work John Calipari has been doing with him individually starting to pay off. Well, the officials are over at the monitor looking for a potential flagrant foul. That's what they're looking at. Yeah, no, that's, that's inadvertent. I mean, that's just an offensive player trying to Clear out, clear some space. That, there's nothing there, in my opinion, at all. Morgan's playing him really, really tight. You've got to give some verticality there to the offensive player. 
Antonio Petty, Lee Cassell, Forrest Sigler, our officiating crew. There's Coach Calipari taking this opportunity to coach up his guys again. Here's another look, and this is what the officials are seeing over at the table. Was that a flagrant foul on Mays with the elbow? Well, you know, it would be a flagrant two, which would be an unintentional. And, and really, you see how tight Morgan is right there defensively. He's just right up in his chest. I mean, he almost fouled him before Julius Mays tried to clear him out with, with his arms. And, I, you know, I'm going to be very surprised if they call that a flagrant two foul. I am. Now Lee Cassell is calling both coaches over. It is going to be a flagrant one on Julius Mays. And you disagree, Joe? I do disagree. But I'm not going to tell the, the official that. Going to be two shots yeah. for Malik Morgan. Antonio Petty just came over and told us that it is a flagrant one. And that's, the, and that's the fourth personal on Mays, yeah. too. Elbow to the, to the chin. Fourth on Mays is significant. You know, I don't officiate, and maybe I'm wrong. But again, I'm paid to give my opinion. I felt like that it was just a natural clear out by Julius Mays right there against a, an over-aggressive defender. And you can see Julius Mays agrees with me that he was just trying to clear some space. But it is what it is. Let's play some basketball. So he sits down with four. Anthony Hickey has four personals as well for LSU, and he brings it across the timeline for the Tigers. Under six minutes to go in Lexington. Hammock driving, and it spins in. Very nice. For Shane Hammock, the Dutchman, yeah. on the board. He's only played in three SEC games prior to this afternoon, but coming off the bench and making a contribution for LSU. Good one. Good pass to Noel, but it was stripped out of his hands. They're going to call a foul on the Tigers, and Noel will go to the free throw line. And so Bryant picks up his third personal foul. Shane Hammock is a 6'7 freshman from the Netherlands. Watch him take it all the way in left-handed. When you get it on the banking board, your percentage goes up. It dropped for him. Nice job. His dad, Gert, who played at LSU for Dale Brown, would like that one. You know, and speaking of Dale Brown, interesting, that a lot of history in this building. 36 years, Rupp Arena has been in downtown Lexington. Only one coach has ever beaten Kentucky four times in Rupp Arena, and that man would be the former LSU coach, Dale Brown. I was hoping to get a chance to talk to him on Wednesday, but he wasn't at the game. So I had to stay home and watch it on the SEC network. Ten points now for Noel as the lead is eight for Kentucky. As, they, as Wimp Sanderson would say, he's probably off climbing the, the Amazon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the Amazon's a river, by the way. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're so good with your geography. <laughs> O'Brien on the block. Goes left, comes back right. That was halfway down and came out of the cup. Yeah, great look for LSU right there. You can't get a better look than that. Just couldn't get it in. Tough break. Kentucky will start to run some clock. Shot clock at 10. Harrell lost it. Turnover. LSU's got it. Malik Morgan made the play defensively. Came out and contested Harrell. Knocked it off his leg. Another good defensive possession for the Tigers. Only down eight points. They are hanging around, Clay Matvick. 13th Kentucky turnover. Said this LSU bunch came back from 14 down Wednesday night to beat AM. They're a scrappy bunch. Hickey for three. Wow. It's a five point game. 16 points off turnovers now for LSU. And that press picks up again for the Tigers. Got to recover right here. Good job by LSU getting back. Got a trap, recovered nicely, and now it's five on five on the, in the half court. This is the closest that LSU has been in the second half. One other time they got to within five, but then Kentucky 
turn down the heat. Now Mays for three. In and out. Noel stripped, and here comes Hickey. Hickey Good. will pull it out and wait for reinforcements. Good decision right there by Hickey. He's 5'10". Goodwin was 6'4". Didn't want to challenge him. Run some offense. Momentum is in your favor if you're LSU. Three. He's got it. And it belongs to Kentucky. As the crowd breathes a deep sigh of relief. Timeout on the floor. Still a lot to be determined on this Saturday at Rupp Arena. Today's SEC Network game is brought to you by the new Buick Enclave. It's smart, made beautiful. And by Wendy's new right price, right size menu. With big tastes you can't find anywhere else. LSU trailed by as many as 15 in this game, Joe Dean, but remember, they paired away at a 14-point deficit on Wednesday night and beat AM. Well, they're a scrappy bunch. They won't go away. Anthony Hickey with a big three. We saw him steal the ball a minute ago to create an opportunity for LSU. And, and I'll tell you, it's a team that has got quickness. Uh, they're not the biggest team. They're maybe not the most talented team, but they're playing to the personality of their coach, Johnny Jones, who was a tremendous player at LSU on the 1981 Final Four team for the Tigers. Look at here. Another steal, Coleman. We got a ball game play. The lead is three for Kentucky. With three minutes to go. It's a three-minute game right now. 9-1 LSU run. The quickness is showing for the Tigers with their steals on the defensive end. Wiltshire sets. Strong. Poitras. But he'll go to the line. Uh, he's given great effort today. Great effort, and he's matched up on a smaller guard in Malik Morgan. That's a mismatch. Poitras realizes it, gets to the weak side of the board, and goes up and rebounds and tries to put it back in and gets the foul. Another nervous afternoon for Coach Cal. This is the closest the game has been since it was 7-5. Got to have those, Poitras. Poitras coming into the game today is actually shooting the same percentage from the field than he is the foul line, 62%. One is very, very good. One is not so good. Well, he gets the back in. Four-point lead for Kentucky with 2.42 to go. Nervous energy from this rough crowd. O'Brien. Coleman. Got the ball, but that's going to be a foul on LSU. Yeah, Malik Morgan trying to tap the ball to Coleman on the offensive board. Went over the back. That's a good call, and LSU is going to shoot. Excuse me, Kentucky is going to shoot free throws. Yeah, they're in the double bonus. That's the fourth on Morgan. Kentucky defended really, really well that last possession. LSU, no good looks. They had to settle for a Johnny O'Brien fall away under heavy pressure by Nerlens Noel. Stringer comes back in for LSU. Morgan will sit with the four fouls. Leading scores, 17 for Poitras, Goodwin, Noel, and Harrell also in double figures. Good balance today from the Cavs. Yeah, you're right, Clay. That is tremendous balance for Kentucky. That, that will really please John Calipari, that his team is sharing the ball, looking for the guys that are hot, and spreading the offense around. When you have that, you can't concentrate on any one or two players. LSU needs a basket right here in the worst way. Stringer went out of bounds. Carmouche finds an angle toward the hoop. 
turned it over on the pass to O'Brien, taken away. Tenth turnover for LSU now. It comes at a bad time. Kentucky will run clock now. 22 on the shot clock. They will run it all the way down inside of five. Five to shoot. Good one. Lobs it to Noel. Strips. Hickey again. Knocked it away. Carmouche. Good pass to O'Brien. And a timeout. Johnny Jones calling the timeout. Both teams with two remaining. LSU within four with a minute 17 to play. Anthony Hickey made this play. The leading steals leader in the nation. Watch this. Knocks it away from Nerlens Noel. Gets it to uh, Carmouche, who pushes the ball down, creates the layup opportunity for Johnny O'Brien. That is defense to offense. Tremendous effort by the LSU Tigers to hang in there here in Rupp Arena. Only Anthony Hickey can play that aggressive with four fouls because he knows how to do it. There you see the setting now with a minute 17 to go. Each team with two timeouts left. Kentucky in the double bonus. The possession arrow favors the Tigers. And remember, LSU forced 19 Texas A&M turnovers on Wednesday night in Baton Rouge. Johnny Jones wants to press. He wants to trap, try to create some turnovers with his quick defense. He has a quick team on the floor right here. Oh, Coleman at half court commits the foul on Harrow. Harrow is only a 60% free throw shooter. We've talked about the struggles for both of these teams at the foul line this year. Kentucky 12th in the league, LSU 13th. Kentucky 13 of 20 at the line today. And Goodwin will come back in. Wiltshire sits down. Two hundred ninety eighth in the country at the line. He got the back end. And it's 70 to 65 as Polson also comes back in. Harrow will take a breather. Polson's a good defender. He's a little bigger than Andre Stringer and is going to try to keep the ball off of LSU's best three point shooter. Number 10 Andre Stringer. Dangerous pass there. Hickey for three. Yes. LSU back to within two. And a timeout. This is unbelievable. Johnny O'Brien made the pass over the defender, Goodwin, and Anthony Hickey just jumped up and played string music for the LSU Fighting Tigers, who will not quit here this afternoon in Rupp Arena under Johnny Jones. There's an official's timeout. Gonna make no, sure. Check that. LSU did right. call it. They're going to make sure that Hickey was behind the three-point line. I'm pretty sure he was, but they will double-check to make sure. Yeah, here, here it is right there. Oh, he's clearly behind. He's two feet behind the line. Not even close. Good job by Gary Clem's crew again. Just to clean this up, LSU did not call that timeout. That was an official's timeout. Okay. The clock is going to be reset. No, actually, uh, Lee Cassell, the official, told us that the ball went through the basket at right at one minute, which means the clock would continue to run. It has to be right. under a minute to stop it. Forty seconds to go. Mays with eight on the shot clock. The ball was kicked. And that's a foul on Stringer. No, they're going to give it to Hickey. That's his fifth. Stringer. 
And now they just changed it back to Stringer. It was definitely Stringer. I, I, I was waiting to find out what that was, but it was Stringer who got his feet tangled up with Julius Mays. Nice two-man game right there by Wiltshire and Mays to create the lane, the, the, uh, the path to the lane for number 34. A nervous Ashley Judd. Three point lead. LSU has the ball. Shot clock is off. Got to look for a three here. Coleman. O'Brien. 3.9 to go, but LSU missed the three. They have to settle for two. And a timeout, Tigers. Now what do they do? Well, for, for one thing, Johnny O'Brien didn't have the presence of mind of time and score right there. Uh, great rebound. He should have thrown it back out because, you know, now they have a tough situation. You see number one right here? That's Anthony Hickey. If he throws it out there, Hickey has a shot, a look at a three. But 3.9, LSU is going to have to try to deny all passing lanes, try to get a quick out of steal on the out of bounds. If not, they'll foul. We'll walk 94 feet for Kentucky to shoot free throws. Good look at the, L the LSU staff, Robert Kirby, Charlie Leonard right there, former head coach at Christian Brothers College in Memphis, Tennessee, Christian Brothers University, I should say. And David Patrick also is one of the assistants at LSU. Tom Kelsey is the director of basketball operations at LSU, former head coach at Bellhaven. There's that pressure defense by LSU hoping to cause a turnover. They get it to Wilcher, and Wilcher will go to the free throw line. He's a good foul shooter, 76%. Yeah, smart play by John Calipari. He set up a play to get his best free throw shooter the basketball here. Of course, three seconds is plenty of time, even if he makes both of these play to, for LSU to advance the ball and get a shot in the front court. Who do you want taking that shot? If you're uh, LSU, you're not going to have a choice. You know, Hickey or Stringer obviously have the quickness to get it up the floor. Kentucky will be nervous about fouling, so I would guess they'll get a, a look from about 30 feet, see if they can throw it in. I'm not sure what the discussion is. no points here in the second half but he can hit some big free throws here for Kentucky with three seconds to go whether he makes or misses is inconsequential to LSU they, they've only got 3.1 seconds to advance the ball they're going to try to get it in the hands of Hickey or Stringer to push it across into front court and take a long three-point shot. Now the officials want to talk this over in private. Still have no idea what the problem is. Well, what we're being told is that LSU is complained that Nerlens Noel checked into the game, and there were six LSU players on the court, six Kentucky players on the court when the ball was thrown in. Obviously, if that's the case, that should be a technical foul. You can't play with six players. I did not see that. And the officials didn't either because um, they're going to let it go. They're going to let it go, and, and Kyle Wilcher will shoot two foul shots here. 
Kentucky 15 of 24 at the line now. timeout. They're out of timeouts. 3.1 seconds to go. They are going to, LSU is going to run an underneath out of bounds play at the other end of the floor and they're going to try to get either Anthony Hickey or Andre Stringer curling around some screens and moving up the floor to get the pass as they're moving toward their basket. That's what they will attempt to do. If they can get that pass, they've got the quickest guys on the court to advance it into the front court and pull up and shoot, you know, a 30, 35 foot three pointer, which we saw, we saw Marshall Henderson make that against Vanderbilt a couple of weeks ago. Now the question begs, would John Calipari in that situation foul Hickey or Stringer in the back court and force him to go to the line with under three seconds to go? I don't think he will, but some coaches might consider doing that. Johnny Jones has a top 10 recruiting class already. Jarrell Martin is the prize of that class from Madison Academy in Baton Rouge. He is a 6'8", talented player that's a top 10 high school player in the country. So the future is bright for LSU. At least they feel that way in Baton Rouge. But what this would do for that program under the first year head coach, a win here at Rump Arena, you really can't measure it. Well, any, to anybody that comes into this building and, and comes out with a victory, uh, it's almost like winning two games, really. Texas A&M felt that two weeks ago. We were right here. But the odds are not in their favor. They've got to bring it the length of the floor with 3.1 seconds to go. They're going to three. Yeah, they're going to try to throw the ball with Carmouche all the way to half court. There it is, going toward the basket, just like we said. Hickey. And there's the foul. And he is fouled by Archie Goodwin. Interesting. Interesting. John Calipari did not want to give Hickey the opportunity to jump up with a second to go from 25 to 30 feet and knock down the three. A one and one coming up for Hickey. As Wilcher comes back in. Give him a little more size down low for the rebound. Exactly. He will make, try to make this first one. Does not. Ball game. Rebound Kentucky and Poitras is fouled with one second to go as Kentucky is going to hang on. LSU out of timeouts. Really got to tip your hat to LSU's effort, especially in the second half. No question about it. I mean, they, LSU won the second half here, down 11 at the break. And you've got to give Johnny Jones and his staff and this gritty group of LSU Tigers a lot of credit coming in here and, and taking uh, the, the Kentucky Wildcats to the buzzer. Alex Poitras gets a big hug from John Calipari. Had a great ball game today. Did uh, Alex Poitras. 75-70, Kentucky with the win over LSU. They go to four and two in the SEC and LSU falls to one and five. Kentucky will be at Ole Miss on Tuesday. A chance to get a signature win. Hard fought victory today for the Wildcats. Again, 75-70 the final for Joe Dean and our entire SEC Network crew. I'm Clay Mantic. Proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television. So long from Lexington.